Hey, it's Taya Gherkin, and um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the guitars uh, that Doug Young and I used on our album of duets that uh, just came out. And um, so we're just going to move through them kind of quick, just to give you an idea of what they are, because people have already started to ask us. So the guitar I'm holding here, which I used on several tracks on the CD, uh, is my Loudon 010. This is a 1999 Loudon. Um, I actually bought this at the NAMM show in 1999. It's got a cedar top. Mahogany back and sides, and it's the classic jumbo uh, loud and shape, the whole shape. Uh, this is an Ed Claxton EM model. Uh, it's relatively new. I only picked this up a few years ago. I've known Ed for, I don't know, a decade or more. He lives in Santa Cruz, not far away from me. So I've played lots of Ed's guitars, and I have two others. But uh, it is uh, a European German spruce top, and uh, Ed has an incredible stash of, of Brazilian rosewood for the back and sides. I also used my uh, custom shop Martin. Uh, this is a uh, Martin OM from 2004. Had a Rondack spruce top, Indian rosewood back and sides, uh, no fingerboard inlay, and it's uh, got the wide vintage uh, string spacing, uh, two and three eighths at the saddle, and a one three quarter inch nut with this guitar. Uh, I had the great pleasure of working with uh, Dick Boak on when he was uh, still uh, part of Artist Relations at Martin Guitar. This guitar is a Martin uh, Lawrence Juber model. Uh, when Lawrence first did, uh, had these made, he did, I believe, a run of 100 or so in Indian Rosewood and then a short run of 50 in Brazilian Rosewood. And uh, this is number 30 out of the Brazilian Rosewood run. So uh, at around the top and uh, again, a Brazilian back and sides on this guitar. Okay, on Seagull, um, I use this uh, National Tricone. Um, this is a, a 1999. It's a very special guitar to me. It used to belong uh, to the late Dale Miller. Um, I acquired it uh, from his widow Terry after he passed away. It's a great um, uh, Tricone built in San Luis Obispo by National Resophonic. Uh, this is a fun guitar. This is a guitar made by Kent Hamblin. I had not heard of him when I came across the guitar at Griffin Stringed Instruments. It was uh, on sale, used on consignment. I sat and played it for a while, really liked it, and thought I'd go home and sleep on it. And uh, as I got to the car, I said, that guitar won't be there in the morning. <laughs> so uh, I went back and, uh, and uh, grabbed it on the spot. 20 years old now, and it's opening up, and I'm using it on a lot of things. Uh, it is Engelman spruce top, which is greatly yellowed now after almost 20 years, and a very unique looking Brazilian uh, rosewood back. Okay, for Red Snapper, I decided to try a little bit more of an electric guitar uh, sound, and I used this uh, Epiphone Joe Pass. Um, not sure what year this was made, I'm guessing mid 90s. It's one of the Korean made ones. Um, not an expensive guitar, uh, but sounded great on this track. So this is a Taylor uh, Grand Symphony model, 12 string. Uh, I got this guitar after reviewing a similar guitar for acoustic guitar, and I was really struck by that guitar, but it was not a cutaway. I believe it had Taylor's inlay on the fretboard. So I ordered this as a custom model. Uh, it is uh, Sitka top, maple back and sides, no fretboard inlay, and uh, a cutaway to match what I was looking for. I used this Mario Deseo baritone guitar for several tracks on the album. Uh, it's a very fun guitar. Uh, it's got a 27 and a half inch scale, uh, typically tuned B to B, even though I tend to go to alternate tunings from there. It's got a uh, Sitka spruce top and Peruvian walnut back and sides. I've been a fan of Loudon guitars for a long time and I've tried a number of them. And uh, to a large extent, I've been uh, greatly inspired by, by Teo's O10. Uh, every time we play together, especially when we play acoustically, that guitar is so big and full that it's hard to compete with. So I've been looking for a guitar that would match uh, his for when we play together for a long time. And I've tried several other Loudons, and I have a couple others that uh, sound really good. But this 035 uh, showed up at Griffin recently, and uh, I really liked it. It seemed like it was one of the loudest and uh, uh, fattest sounding of the bunch. So it still doesn't compete with the 20-year-old O10, but it's got, tw in 20 years, it probably will. It has a cedar top and Madagascar rosewood back and sides. On a couple of tracks, we decided we wanted a nylon string guitar, and um, 
I use this uh, Kenny Hill Robert Ruck model guitar. Uh, it's a really uh, fun guitar to play, built with a cedar top and uh, Indian rosewood back and sides. It has the two ports and um, have Gilbert tuning machines on this. And uh, this is a guitar I got from Kenny many years ago, and it's been my main go-to classic guitar for a long time. This little 12-string is one of the most uh, unique instruments that I've played. Uh, this started out because I was experimenting with a, a Vallette Griffin, uh, which is also a small guitar, and our local luthier, Tony Yamamoto, saw me playing it, and he said, I, I could build you something kind of like that, but maybe a little different. Uh, the Griffin is a little bit of a small neck, a little uh, tight for finger style. So this guitar has a wide nut, two and a quarter uh, inches, it uh, is a short scale. This would be the fifth fret on a normal guitar, tuned as a 12 string. I also, uh, Tony made custom nuts so that I can switch this out between unison or octave 12 strings, but I've been mostly using it as octave 12 strings. The top is a wood called Polonia, which is a very uh, light and soft wood that comes from Singapore that Tony really likes. The back, however, is Makassar Ebony, so the guitar is fairly heavy because of that.